Okay, now the purpose. Now you, you just finished talking about the uh, health, the health of a of a person, of his self-image. Now the purpose of counseling someone, what is the purpose? First, to strengthen the relationship with God. So first, most important is the relationship with God and from it everything flows. But he still needs to have healthy relationship in other things. It'll help him to think normally. If he doesn't think normally, he always think negatively. He always think the world is bad. Now, it's true the world is bad, but there is still goodness in the world. We still can find food. We can buy food. We can, you know, there are people who serve us in a community. So we need to accept and appreciate God for all these things. And we need to thank people for giving us these services. So ability to think normally, to think normally of the Bible, of the teachings in the Bible, and then to help him to manage his emotions that we want to help him so that he's not out of control out, uh, of his anger, his sadness, his despair, that he can manage his emotions. And this affects people greatly. And then to help the body to restore its vitality. Now some people are always tired, cannot concentrate in prayer, cannot concentrate to read the Bible, cannot concentrate to listen to sermons. Then there is something wrong physically. So we need to help people to, have, to eat healthy food, to sleep early, to have good sleep, and then uh, to have exercise so that there is energy, there's vitality. When he talks, there is energy, uh, there is joy, there is strength. Now we all need this. So uh, you can all watch these videos again online and then check with yourself. Am I healthy in these areas? And then to help him to restore healthy interpersonal relationship. So we need to have healthy relationship with people that we can talk with them, relate to them, and handle difficult relationship and, uh, and build up relationship and also have healthy family uh, relationship. And then six, to help him to appreciate and enjoy f nature and the environment. That, so we talk about one el element of health is uh, health with the, uh, the environment that he would look at nature and say oh I thank God for the nature I like nature I enjoy it so this is part of being a healthy person now when I came to uh, Kenya in the past when I walk out at night I always appreciate seeing the stars so many stars because here in Hong Kong I don't see so many stars because it's too bright here we see some stars, but not as many. But in Kenya, when I went there, and some other places I went to, they have, I see many more stars too. And I appreciate that. I appreciate the birds. I appreciate the trees and the cows and the, and the grass. And I, and I like the things I see in nature. And then seven, to help him to have healthy group activities. Can he relate to the cell group, to relate to the church, relate to his family? that he has healthy group activities or relate to it, the people at work and then to bring healing in the above area so if he has any problem in the above areas he need healing so the counseling is for bringing help to this different area the relationship with God to think normally and then his emotions he manages his emotions to body the body has vitality and healthy interpersonal relationship and uh, appreciate and enjoy nature and have healthy group activities in church and family and in work and to bring healing in these above areas. Now first we want to talk about bad counseling skills so that we know that we want to avoid this. First, make the counselee feel uncomfortable. Sometimes when people counsel people they'll say, you did this wrong, you did this wrong, you no good, you are no use. Sometimes it's not necessarily so serious as that. They will just say, oh, you're terrible. You, you're good for nothing. You never improve. It's too hard. I give up on you. So those words will make the person uncomfortable and disappointed. And two, despise the counselee and his feelings. So we say, well, I do help him because he's my church member, but I just want to get rid of him. Uh, I 
just don't want to spend too much time on him. Uh, and, and what he feels doesn't matter. He, he feels unhappy. That's natural. He's always unhappy. So I'm not going to think about that. So the, despise the counsel, counseling and the feelings. It's very important that we accept people's feelings. Let me ask you. When you are unhappy, when you tell someone you are unhappy, if the person just walk away, you say, oh, I'm very sad today because uh, uh, one of my family members got sick. And then someone hears that and just walk away. How do you feel? You feel that the person doesn't care about you at all. When you have a family member of sickness, he doesn't care, he doesn't respond. So no matter how unimportant this person is, God still regards this person as an important person. And if we make this person feel disappointed, we are making Jesus feel disappointed. So we want to accept people and their feelings. And three, don't compare ourselves with the counselee. If the counselee said, oh, I cannot handle my family problem. And then we we'll say, I can handle my family problem. I don't know why you cannot. Uh, he said, he, he, uh, he has no strength from praying. He said, and then we we'll say, I have strength. I don't know why. You, you didn't pray. You didn't pray much. You didn't pray enough, therefore you don't, you don't have strength. So uh, they compare. That's the wrong way. Another wrong way is being emotionally affected by the counselee. When the counselee did something wrong, it's like, got angry. I told you not to do that. Why did you do that? So that, that's his emotional effect. Or, or he said, oh, I helped you so many times and you still cannot change. I give up on you. I'm very unhappy. Then it's affected by the counselee also. And then number five, counsel, counselor only cares and does not guide the counselee. Now, some counseling is just caring, comforting, but doesn't guide the person to change. That is not healthy counseling either. And number six, counselor only teaches and does not respond to the feelings of the counselee. He just teaches. In the counseling, he just say, well, you listen, you obey, you forgive you repent and then you ask God to forgive you and then you love him and change him help him so it's just teaching and doesn't respond to his feelings he's feeling uh, uh, you know he he feel difficult he feel that he has no ability uh, that he feel uh, disappointed in himself that he cannot handle the situation then we'll say I understand that right now you're feeling disappointed, you have no strength, and you feel sad about it. So uh, then we can help the person uh, respond to the feelings. Excuse me. So respond to the feeling of the counsel, counselee, and and. Uh, and then care about him. And then number seven, counselor crosses the counselor boundary. What it means is, like, there are different ways that people cross the boundary. One way is that uh, he let the counselee depend on him. That the counselee would ask his help every day. Always come to him for everything. And even have a romantic depend dependence on him then it's wrong or even you know every time every problem at home he will call the counselor and say please help me with this then it's crossing the the counselor boundary we cannot let the people let the counselor control us and take over our life we have our life we have our responsibilities we cannot just let the person do anything he wants uh, so we need to be very careful that that uh we need to keep the boundary so that we don't let the person depend on us. Now, sometimes the counselor depends on the counselee because he finds comfort when this counselee depends on him and asks for help. And this counselor feels very happy about that. So he continues to, you know, to try to help this counselee. But in fact, he wants to help so that he will feel wanted. He is something that he... Uh, he feels that he's important. 
So this, all these are ways that people cross the boundary. Okay, C counseling principles. First, the counselor has to counsel himself uh, for his whole lifetime. There's no D here. So for his whole lifetime, what does it mean? He need to find out, is he thinking healthily? Is his emotions healthy? Are his emotions healthy? Are his relationship with people healthy? Does he, is he joyful in the Lord? Does he have strength in the Lord? Why does he have any problem? So as pastors, we all need to examine our lives. Are we healthy people? First, healthy person, and then healthy Christian, and then healthy pastor. So are we healthy in these areas? If we are not healthy, what are the problems? We cannot blame people. Some people say, well, my wife is not good, so I'm unhappy. So uh, we have talked about that, how not to be affected by people. If there are problems, I need to turn off their negative influence. I can still be joyful if someone is negative to me. I don't have to take them seriously. So there's no excuse for being sad all the time and being, being depressed. Okay, number two, respect the counselee and accept and treasure him unconditionally like God accepts us before uh, he changes us. Now, God accepts us before he changes us. When God came to us first, we had all kinds of sins and problems, but God doesn't wait for us to change. He changes first. He loves us first. And He changes us. When we are still very dirty and sinful, He works on our life to change us. So we want to be accepting people, care about people, as God accepts us before we became a Christian. So we want to accept people and care about them. And number three, help the counselee to know and explore his potential and resources. Each person is precious, even though the person might be very weak now, but we can help him. He has a lot of potential to grow. Everyone has the potential to grow, and he has a lot of resource. His resource and his ability to think, his ability to relate to people, his spiritual gifts, his uh, financial resource, all these are resources, and his resource of friends, uh, his resource of relationship with people, uh, all these are resources. So we want to explore these resources to help the person use these resources for his benefit. Number four, care for the thinking, feeling, behavior, and spiritual life of the counselee. We care for the whole person, not just one area. Okay, so. Uh, let's go back to this again. So counseling principle, first we have to counsel ourselves when we respect the person, accept everything about him, his feelings, uh, uh, care about his feeling and everything and care uh, and accept them. And number three, help the counselee uh, to know and explore his potential and feeling, his resource. So he is uh, important. We want to help him to explore his his uh, resource, to use his resource for his benefit and then care for his thinking, emotions and feeling and everything he has and his spiritual life. And then six kinds of feelings. I hope we all remember this um, so that we cell phone just runs out of electricity um, okay six kinds of feelings that uh, we can remember glad sad mad afraid ashamed hurts so these are feelings that everyone has this is a feeling that we all have that we can be happy um, Um, that we are aware that we are happy and then sad that when something happened, unfortunate happened that we'll be sad or anger we have anger when someone hurts us or things don't get the way we want or afraid we have fear or ashamed we feel ashamed of ourselves or feel guilty and hurts so we have to be now these are groups of feeling that they are related feelings related to this like for glad there is 
happiness and also excitement um, person is excited for is elated very very happy uh, very uh, thankful for everything he has and then sad sometimes it, a person could be depressed could be in despair could be losing hope could be uh, uh, seeing everything as hopeless uh, no future and then anger uh, related to that would be frustrated uh, easily annoyed and then fear uh, other feelings related to that would be like uh, retreating going back and panic and uh, anything happens he it would uh, any small thing happen it would make him think of the serious thing and then he would have panic responses and then five a shame uh, that he's ashamed of his past of his sins of his life of his body of his maybe his uh, fatness or his height or his look that he's ashamed of or guilty uh, that he's guilty of his sins and feel guilty about it and hurts that he has been hurt by people and then he cannot uh, be healed he has not found way to heal his uh, his hurt feelings okay so uh, we will stop here and we'll resume again after lunch um, so now being aware of this feeling is very important uh, being aware of this feeling because we want to be able to name the feelings of people so you can think about this feeling and remember this glad, sad, mad, afraid, ashamed, hurts and uh, during lunch time you can think about your life uh, when I talk about different elements of being healthy so are you healthy? are you healthy related to these areas? are you um, a complete uh, do you have a complete health or do you have serious problem in some areas? Uh, so we want to have health of ourselves and, and, and then we can uh, build up the health of other people. Now, so I'm going to go through this very, very quickly uh, of a healthy person. That we have health of spiritual, physical, mental and emotional. To relate to people with an environment, with group and a meaning and purpose of life. That we have meaning of, of our life that uh, our external lifestyle is healthy, internal lifestyle is health healthy and have a healthy system, support system from God and from people and then we can handle different difficult situations and then as a social being we can be alone and be uh, calm and peaceful doing things and we can relate to people and, and talk with people and listen to people and ability to action that we uh, they have motivation to do things now some people they just want to sleep they have no, no motivation and some people who are depressed they have they just want to stay home they don't want to do anything so there are people who lose their motivation to do things and ability to think of ways to solve problem creativity and commit that he can commit to action he wanted uh, he can commit to himself to his task to the church to the family, to relationship and then a uh, sense of uh, his self-worth that he believes that he has self-worth that he can handle difficult situation with God's help and he accept his past and future and present and future and hope for the future and he can accept God's love that he's precious and also um, it's also built up when, uh, when we can build up ability that we have self-worth when we build up ability to relate to people to solve problems to do things correctly and to learn things to serve God and as an experiential person that he can experience emotions he can accept his feelings he can experience joy uh, he can enjoy life and he can calm himself down and then the 
counseling is for helping people strengthen the relationship with God and to think normally and to manage his emotions to help the body to restore his, his vitality to help him restore healthy interpersonal relationship to help him appreciate and enjoy nature to like nature and help him to have healthy group activities in the church in the home and to bring health in these areas that he can relate to people to God to his emotions the whole person and a bad counseling skill is to make people feel uncomfortable unhappy and despise their feeling and compare them with other people and being affected by them emotionally and get angry and does, doesn't guide them to change or doesn't care both are wrong and uh, only teaching no responding to the feelings and then crossing the boundary and the counseling principles are first we counsel ourselves and then we respect the counselee accept and treasure him and help him to explore his potential and resource so we want the person to live a fuller life and care for everything of him everything and then when us understand and remember this feeling glad sad mad afraid ashamed hurts now many times when people have feelings someone asks them how do you feel now they say uh, for instance uh, s someone did something bad to him and someone asked him what is your feeling how do you feel now he would say he is wrong he is wrong is a thinking that he thinks he's wrong the feeling is maybe he's angry he's unhappy he feels hurt he feels hopeless he feels disappointed these are feelings now why do we need to be aware of our feelings because what affects people most are their feelings now you might disagree with me let me explain this if we remember our childhood what we remember are whether the childhood experiences bring us happiness or sadness sometimes we forget about what happened but we remember some people say i was very sad i was very hurt when i was a child and some people say I feel very happy now that's very good I felt very happy when I was a child uh, or some people say when I think of my ministry I feel unhappy so they have this feeling and this feeling affects them they was they will lose hope in a the ministry they will feel disappointed in ministry they feel no strength in the ministry because of the emotions because emotions is the re natural response of people and we need to heal our emotions it's not to suppress we need to accept our feelings and then we heal our feelings with the presence of God to bring healing so uh, in this lunch time I hope you will think about the feelings you have and try to handle it and try to uh, and say the Lord can heal my feelings the Lord can bring healing to me and give me joy and strength and I can uh, have a healthy life I have have a, a joyful life so I hope uh, that we can restore with the help of God to restore a healthy emotional life okay and uh, so we'll have a prayer now God bless us oh Lord Jesus thank you Lord you create us as complete beings we have a spirit to relate to you we have the soul that has our thinking and our thinking need to be healthy and our will our will need to be healthy and committed to you and our feelings need to be healthy so that we can understand our feelings we can accept our feelings and we can restore our feeling to a healthy way that we can feel happy that we can be joyful all the days of our life that we can enjoy life we can enjoy ministry we can enjoy helping people Lord help us not to live a miserable life not to live in pain not to live in hurt feelings but to live a joyful life please restore our life first so that we can help other people be with us lord thank